this week we'll be going over the trophy collection achievement in Loop Hero. This one is for killing each and every type of enemy in the game. Some of these can be a little complicated to actually get to spawn, so we're going to go over all of these in this video. And now, let's get into it. So first off, we'll need to talk about the encyclopedia. This is a menu option unlocked by the Intel Center building. Once you have this built, you can go into the encyclopedia and over to the enemies tab. In order to get the trophy collection achievement, you're going to need to find and kill each and every enemy shown in here. Some of them require special tile combos or will only spawn after you reach certain chapters. For the first one, we have the slime. This is the default enemy that has the 5% chance to spawn on the blank wasteland tiles. Then we have the rat wolf which you'll need to place a grove tile down to spawn. These will spawn every two days. Then there's the spider which you can spawn from a spider cocoon. These are going to spawn one spider every day. And then we have a few different enemies that can spawn from placing a cemetery tile. First we have the skeleton which will spawn every three days. Second, the Skeleton Archer, which can spawn in place of a Skeleton once you're on Chapter 3. And finally, the Cracked Skeleton, which can spawn at the death of a Skeleton or Skeleton Archer when it has the Not Finished skill after Chapter 2. Then we have the Chest and Mimic, which both can spawn from a battlefield at the beginning of a loop. Next, there's the Blood Clot. This will require you to create a blood path by overlapping two battlefields on an empty wasteland tile. That blood path will then spawn a blood clot every four days. And then we do have a few more enemies that can spawn by being in the area of effect of a battlefield. First being the ghost, which will have a 20% chance of spawning when an enemy with the has a soul type dies. Then the ghost of a ghost has a 20% chance to spawn when a regular ghost dies. And a Prime Matter has a 20% chance of spawning when a ghost of a ghost dies. A common misconception I've seen on this is that having more battlefields in a small area will increase the chance, but that's not the case, you only need to have one battlefield to have the 20% chance on that tile. Next is the Vampire. You'll need to place down a Vampire Mansion, and when you get into a battle in the area of effect of the mansion, a Vampire will join the fight. Then, once you get to Chapter 2, the Vampires will begin spawning a swarm of bats when they reach half health. And then, if you have an abandoned bookery with an overlapping area of effect with a mansion, it will then spawn a Vampire Mage. Then we have a few options coming from the Temporal Beacon tile. First is the Time Watcher, which, like the Vampire, will spawn in fights that take places on tiles within the Temporal Beacon's area of effect. Also, like the vampires, if you have an abandoned bookery with an overlapping area of effect, it will then cause a Time Watcher mage to spawn. Now, if you have an abandoned bookery on its own without a vampire mansion or temporal beacon overlapping it, it will just spawn a tome in fights that take place in its area of effect. And now we're getting into enemies that have a little more nuance to actually spawn. First, we'll go over the goblin camp enemies. In order to spawn a goblin camp, you're going to need to place down 10 rock or mountain tiles. Once the 10th one goes down, a goblin camp will spawn randomly along the track. The first enemy that will spawn is the goblin, which can spawn once a day, and also the goblin leader, which will also spawn once a day. Then if you place a swamp tile down next to the goblin camp, it will become a goblin lookout. These will cause an archer goblin to spawn and take place in adjacent battles. Speaking of mountains and rocks, once you place 9 of them in a 3x3 three three square, it will then turn into a mountain peak that will begin spawning a harpy every 2 days on a random tile. Then to spawn a ghoul, you'll need to place a village directly next to a vampire mansion. The Ransacked Village will then spawn up to four ghouls every loop. And speaking of villages, every two villages you place will spawn a bandit camp next to a village if possible. 
Those will spawn a bandit every two days. And then next we have the gargoyle which will spawn every three days from an empty treasury. In order to get an empty treasury, you're going to need to place a regular treasury, place tiles to cover every spot around it, and it will then turn into an empty treasury. Then we have the flesh golem which will spawn from blood groves after the blood grove has consumed enough enemies. Blood groves can only be placed next to forests, thickets, and regular groves. Next is the Living Armor, which will spawn after every sixth exchange via Smith's Forge. Then we have Mosquitoes, which will spawn every three days by Swamp Tiles. And next is the Scarecrow. For these, you'll need to place a wheat field on the track, and whether it's an overgrown field or still a wheat field, it'll spawn a Scarecrow every four days. Now on any battle that takes place on an overgrown field, you're also going to have fields of blades spawn to fill out empty battle spots to get to four enemies. Then we have the Scorchworm. For these, you're going to need to place ruins tiles, and they will then spawn every two days. Next are the enemies that can spawn from combos with the river tile. First we have the reed tile, which you could create by placing a river next to an empty wasteland tile. This will then start spawning a fish man every three days. Now if you place a river next to a battlefield, the battlefield will then turn into a shipwreck. These will spawn a siren once per loop. Sirens can also summon jellyfish once you get to chapter 4. Then we have the wooden warrior. These will spawn every two days from a village, which are placed randomly each time you place ten forests or thickets. Then we have a very unique enemy called the Dark Slime. This one, you'll need to destroy a roadside tile such as a goblin camp, while an enemy is still on it before it gets to the road. This will then cause a Dark Slime to take its place on the road tile that the enemy would have gone to. Now we can move on to the bosses and their companions, which are a bit simpler to spawn. The Lich will spawn during the boss fight of Chapter 1, the Priestess and Angel will both spawn during the boss fight of Chapter 2. The Hunter and the Hunter's Hound will spawn during the boss fight of Chapter 3. And Omega will spawn during the boss fight of Chapter 4. And that covers all of the enemies needed for the Trophy Collection Achievement in Loop Hero. If you have any questions or just want to hang out in the Community Discord, go check out the link below as well as our Patreon if you'd like to further support the channel and get featured in a credits section at the end of my videos. And as always, if you liked the video or found it helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below with what games you'd like me to cover next.